All right, well, that's six players now that have booked their spots. And uh, it's actually uh, been pretty crazy. It's been a cr pretty crazy to ride over the past couple weeks. We've gotten to see uh, players from Europe and now players from North America. We started off with like 320 players from preliminary. Now we're down to just a few. And there you can see uh, some footage from the Arizona venue. And uh, it's really cool to see these guys getting excited, uh, getting excited about Hearthstone and uh, about competitive Hearthstone. Uh, if you guys want to check out some local Fireside Gatherings near you, you can head over to FiresideGatherings.com. We know there's no preliminaries again for this year, uh, but definitely head out there and uh, play Hearthstone uh, with some of your friends and get to meet some other people who like to play it as well. Uh, but uh, getting you guys ready for the next matchup, we do have Hot Meowth versus Lead Paint. Hot Meowth we've seen play on stream. He had a really close matchup uh, earlier on in the day. Man to fall down the lower bracket. Lead paint, we saw him lose pretty early on yesterday, and he actually had to have a pretty insane run to the lower bracket, winning the last four matches in a row. So it's been a marathon of a day for lead paint. And so both these players are coming in with definitely a lot on the line. And uh, with that, uh, the stakes are high. So I'm going to send it over to the desk to get right in to the next match. Thank you very much, TJ. I'm joined once again by Brian Kibler right here on the desk. And we have another great matchup coming up. That last one was definitely one for the record books, but this one could be hopefully just as good. We have Hot Meowth versus Lead Paint. Yeah, we, uh, we saw Hot Meowth play uh, a deciding match against Roof Trellin earlier today, and that was a truly epic match that uh, went, well, kind of six games, but uh, he you know, has had some time to compose himself and come back. Uh, similarly, Lead Paint was on stream yesterday, and he struggled a bit. He actually, uh, I think, was talking to TJ last night and said, yeah, I really screwed some things up in that match, <laughs> though I'm told he used a little bit more colorful language. Yeah, well, uh, both guys definitely have a lot on the line here and we actually see from Hot Meowth a shaman ban and lead paints warrior has been banned so Hot Meowth really having struggled with that paladin in his match versus Roof Trellin actually got reverse swept uh, so that's gonna be the deck to watch out for him see if he can actually pick up a win with that here and then lead paints lineup looks pretty standard he's got that uh, druid shaman and warlock so it is worth noting that lead paints warlock deck is the reno lock rather yes, than is. the more more common aggressive zoo warlock. So uh, the dynamic of that matchup against Top Meowth decks will be very different. Yeah, that Reno lock is going to be very similar to the one we actually just saw come out from Muzzy, uh, which did work really well for him. It won against the warrior deck, which is probably why we don't see uh, a warrior ban uh, from Lead Paint to Hot Meowth. So we're going to go ahead and get into that first game, and it is going to be Hot Meowth's warrior versus Lead Paint's Druid. And it is a Yogg Druid with both Ragnaros and Onyxia, which we see in his opening hand before he mulligans it away. This That's is, a heavy start. Yeah, this is kind of an iconic matchup from Ladder, not so much an iconic matchup from uh, the games we've actually seen recently in the tournament since Warrior has so generally uh, often been banned. Uh, but this will be an opportunity to have this showdown. This is a matchup that, uh, like many Druid matchups, uh, very often comes down to the ability for the Druid deck to assemble a powerful board early. Uh, however, unlike matchups against decks like Shaman or uh, Warlock, your individual big taunts aren't nearly as powerful because the threat of Execute from the Warrior deck keeps them in check. Yeah, it's also important to note that when you're building up a big board as the Druid with something like the Violent Teacher, um, in this case, Lepate does not have Wisps of the Old Gods, but if you were to have that in the deck, uh, the Warrior with cards like Ravaging Ghoul can really punish you for building up those big boards and then with cards like Frothing Berserker uh, deal a lot of damage very, very quickly. So Lead Paint's definitely going to want to uh, definitely be on the lookout for that, as well as the Execute to his big taunt minions. This is kind of an interesting spot for Lead Paint here. He has the Innervate and could play out the Druid of the Claw. The rest of his hand is so expensive, though. Uh, and if he does choose to play Druid of the Claw, we might even see him play it in cat form just to immediately kill the Frothing Berserker simply because of the threat of Execute. If he were to uh, play the Druid of the Claw in taunt form and then Hot Meowth just attacks, executes, that could go very poorly for him. So we'll see exactly what he does choose to do with the Druid. And yep, it is a cat. Cat is for fight, takes down the Berserker. <laughs> yeah, charging the Druid of the Claw here is definitely the 
smarter choice because you don't see a removal from Hot Meowth directly. Um, he did have the Fiery War Axe and the Ravaging Ghoul, which will allow him to clear that off. But uh, if you were to play it in taunt form and it got cleared off regardless, without clearing off the Frothing first, then you're just setting yourself up for a whole lot of trouble. So this was definitely the smarter play. And he picks up the Mulch, which doesn't do a lot to help his really heavy hand. Yeah, he can use the Living Roots plus his Hero Power to remove this Ravaging Ghoul and uh, is exactly what he will choose to do. Certainly going to be looking to pick up some of his, uh, his more mid-range minions as his hand is glutted with many of his most expensive cards in his deck. So uh, Hot Meowth has a good follow-up with the Corcoran Elite next turn, uh, so he will not be letting up the pressure anytime soon. Yeah, and that's exactly what the Dragon Warrior wants to do. You're really strong when you curve out well, um, Fiery War Axe to get rid of those early minions, and then you want to deal that damage very quickly so then you can curve into that Draconid Crusher, which we see in Hot Meowth's hand, which hopefully can be played for a 9-9 from the Dragon Warrior. And Leadbit is able to use these Living Roots as removal, but he is taking damage because he's forced to use Shapeshift to get in that last point each time. Uh, so if Hot Meowth does uh, get to that Crusher, it's very, very close to being full-sized. He's actually one damage off if uh, Leadbit were to hero power this turn, but it looks like he may just mulch this right away. He wants to ensure uh, that the pressure is let off for at least a single turn. Has the Wild Growth, which will ramp him into the threat of Ragnaros next turn. Mm -hmm. So if Hot Meowth plays a single threat like the Draconic Crusher, it could go very badly for him. Yeah, that actually worked out pretty well for Lead Paint. You don't usually want to mulch the mid-range dragons coming from the Dragon Warrior just because you do always have the threat of the 9-9 Crushers, the Ragnaros, uh, the Gromish Hellscream, of course. But in this case, because he picked up that Wild Growth as well, it allows him to play the Ragnaros and directly challenge a single target coming from Hot Meowth. Yeah, and uh, we actually saw Lead Paint uh, have a lot of problems with Ragnaros yesterday. Did not quite <laughs> do what he wanted, but uh, we will see where the Fire Lord decides to burn. Dragons don't burn, goes to the face. Oh no, he does not look happy about that. Yeah, but currently Hot Meowth does not have an immediate answer. No execute in hand. Oh, just kidding. One came right oh, off the slam. Oh my goodness. And well, it may be nearly Yogg time already. Bloodpaint does so have Ancient soon. of War. He does have Ancient of War, so he can stem a little bit of bleeding right here. And the really scary thing is if he does Yogg, Hot Meowth is getting to the point where he can start playing those big minions. Mm -hmm. He can start playing Ragnaros. He can start playing Grom. And uh, he needs to try to, Lead Paint rather, needs to try to keep himself in a position where those are not going to be threatened to be lethal. Uh, and it will just be the Ancient that gets in the way. If Hot Meowth can find another Execute, this would be really big trouble for Lead Actually, I really liked that Wrath Cycle coming from Lead Paint. Mm -hmm. He figures that he's going to use that now and then next turn. If he draws something like uh, Wild Growth or a second Wrath, then he'll be able to play it and just add even more cards to his Yogg. So he's really just trying to bump up that Yogg Saran to the most spells that he possibly can. Uh, but Hot Mouth, does, Hot Mouth does have a pretty easy clear on this Ancient of War. Yeah, finds the Fire Blast some for, from Sir Finley, so he's able to get uh, even push some damage past the Ancient of War, and uh, Lead Paint is running out of life. We see him in the traditional Yogg Saran pose with his uh, his <laughs> hands pray. clasped in front of him. It is time to praise the God of Death, and let's see where this goes. Who's hope it's ending now? Well. Okay, he gains a bit of mana, and he's not dead, so that's always a good first Cleave. sign. All right, here we go. And Forbidden Shaping. It's a Wisp. Feral Spirits, pretty right. good. All right. Sap. Very nice. Yeah, doing a little bit of a uh, little bit of work here. He has not played that many spells so far this game. So, uh, ooh, hits himself. He just got a Grum. Explosive trap. Interesting. So. All right, that's not really an incredible Yogg. He did manage to uh, assemble a reasonable board, cleared off a couple of things. So he's certainly feeling much more secure than he was pre yogg but he's still at a very low life total. Uh, crucially, though, he's actually developed several minions, which makes the Ragnaros from Hot Meowth much less threatening. Lead Paint may only be at seven health, but if this yogg Saron is able to stick, he's got Grom it's plus Heroic Strike from hand, yeah. which is eight damage. It is true. Hot Meowth is only at 12 health, so he, he has to find some way uh, to stem the damage flow. He does have that Twilight Guardian still, which he can play as a 3-6 taunt once again, but it's actually...
actually going to be a lot closer I, than we thought. Yeah, no, I think Hot Meowth may actually just be on the Ragnaros plan here. He is unsure right now what this trap is. Uh, he knows that it is an, actually, I guess he knows it's a snake because he attacked with his with his uh, hero, mm -hmm. and now he can choose to attack one of these one ones to set up a one in three Ragnaros. Oh, and man. If, if Ragnaros hits Yogg-Saron, then I believe Lead Paint is actually short of lethal damage as well. Yes, he's with Grom plus one charge, damage Grom off lethal. Although he has he has the explosive trap up. So it, it's pretty much just all over. Well, if unless if Hot Meowth does not use the Ragnaros, I think he's going to be in pretty big trouble. The Twilight Guardian, wow. right, he's trying to set up a defensive position here, and this 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 ends up working out pretty well. He he's able to do this, but uh, there is Grom Heroic Strike, which is not quite enough to push for lethal. Savage Roar. Savage Roar. This that is no, he still, still, he still can't quite do it. He can savage roar heroic strike. That's six to uh, his hero, which he can then trade in. But that's still only nine on the og. Well, but it's it's nine damage to the face, and he has explosive trap. Hmm. So I mean, you just have to do it. Well, and then Hot Meowth would have the ability to clear off the uh, potentially clear off the minions on board with his minions, and then drop Ragnaros. Oh my goodness! So this is this is a really <laughs> tough spot for Lead Paint because he's gonna go ahead. It looks like play the Grom. Yeah, so heroic strike plus Grom can clear and push some damage. It's gonna come down to a Ragnaros from Hot Meow. Yeah, he pushes down to two. It looks like he's yeah he's gonna go ahead and. Put this in a position where Hot Meowth is going to be lethal by explosive trap if he does attack. But Hot Meowth, he has the Ragnaros, and he he knows this is this, 50, this explosive 50. trap. Is, well, this explosive trap is just face up. Yes. You know he knows that. Okay, this has got to be explosive trap. There's no other play that no other trap that this makes any sense. I'm just going for it. You know, you got your Yog, I got my Rag. Let's see who wins this fight. Oh no. It's and, a 50 50 for lethal. This is, this is actually huge, though, too, because he pinged the Grom. He killed the Grom. But now there's the swipe. There's the Savage Roar. Lead Paint has the lethal damage. So you see a huge sigh of relief. Oh, my goodness. As that game what? just went back and forth. And it will be Lead Paint who pulls out game one. What a game. That, that Yogg, I mean, it really. It, didn't, it wasn't the most amazing Yogg, but it set him up with the board that he really needed. Even just the 7-5 body was enough. Yeah, uh, he, he got the, the body and a little bit of defense. Mm -hmm. He didn't clear his opponent's board, but he got a couple of Feral Spirits. And I mean, people talk about the dramatic swings, crazy Yoggs, but when, when you're at a certain density of spells, there's there's kind of a general impact of Yogg that you can, you can assume that it's going to kill some minions, draw you some cards, maybe put some things in play. Obviously, the specifics of which it does can mm -hmm. have a, a big impact on how the game plays out. And sometimes there's the truly crazy ones like we saw earlier today. Uh, but it's a powerful card for a reason. There's, it's in these decks because it predictably does something akin to what it just did right there. And even then, it still came down to that rag shot. Uh, you know what? Lead Paint's rag wasn't exactly cooperating earlier, so... I guess him and Hot Meowth are even on the Ragnaros, <laughs> but uh, oh man, what a game one. If that's indi any indicator for how the match is going to go, we are in for a really good one. Yeah, and, and I mean, there's still some very cool decks left. Uh, that you know, the, the Dragon Warrior versus Druid is probably the most typical matchup we're going to get, because there's still the Murloc Paladin from Hot Meowth remaining, as well as Lead Paint playing the Reno Lock deck. Yeah, I'm really excited to see more of this Reno Lock, and then... Hot Meowth's any Finn Paladin was just really what held him back from already winning a match earlier today. Rift Trellin was able to reverse sweep it, and it's going to be, I don't know, maybe maybe difficult once again for him to pick up a win. Yeah, it was interesting watching particularly the final game of that match where it was the Nazoth Paladin deck versus the any Finn Paladin deck. And you think, at least in my mind, the reason that you choose to play any Finn Paladin is because it gives you this over-the-top burst finisher in mm -hmm. control matchups allows you to actually pressure your opponent down, whereas sort of attrition-style Paladin, like the Nazoth deck, um, has, you know, to really play like a more on-the-board kind of fair style of game. Yeah. But it was the fair game that won that matchup, and it, it didn't seem like it was any kind of fluke even. Mm -hmm. Prior to when there was that unfortunate disconnect, it seemed like Ruth Chalm was ahead to Dare as well, so... 
it's I'm, I'm curious as to the specific decision making process that uh leads players to, to bring the murloc paladin deck right now yeah, well, unfortunately, we're not going to see that Murloc Paladin quite yet. It is instead going to be Hot Meowth queuing once again with that Warrior deck, and it's going to be the Reno Lock from Lead Paint. We just saw Muzzy actually win this matchup with his Hi, Reno Lock. Uh, what do you think about the matchup? This is a matchup that is one of the reasons you play Reno Lock. Uh, the Reno Lock deck is very strong against most Warriors in general. Uh, you build your, your strategy your entire lineup really around Reno Lock because you're choosing not to ban Warrior. And uh, as we saw in that previous match, you're just so good at dealing with decks that are that are playing to the board and doing so in a way that's kind of just mid-range minions each turn. So unless the uh, Dragon Warrior deck has a particularly aggressive draw, which Hot Meowth clearly does not, uh, you tend to be a, a pretty big favorite, it seems. My Not favorite card fantastic. in the deck coming into Lead Paint's hand, Sawgoth the Slitherer. And that card is a huge part of the advantage that you have because Sawgoth gives you a big, unexecutable taunt. One of the advantages that uh, Dragon Warrior has over a lot of decks that include big minions is execute. It's like, oh, you play a big taunt, fine, I'll kill it for mm -hmm. one mana. And that's just not possible with Sawgoth. And, uh, you know, could very well be a major factor in this game if it gets to that point. Lead Paint flashing the camera a thumbs up when he draws that <laughs> Shadow Bolt, easily taking out the Frothing Berserker. And uh, it's looking like he's off to a really nice start. Hot Meowth, however, has been pushing quite a bit of damage, and he does have a reasonable curve as well. Yeah, Lead Paint picks up a Demon Wrath, though, which he can pair with the Mortal Coil to clear the board. He did already have the Hellfire, but that runs the risk of getting his life total down a bit lower. Uh, he may want to hold on to that, n and not necessarily cast who doesn't have to, simply because he's under a lot of pressure. Also, drawing a card at this point is very valuable for him, uh, since that he needs to find plays to fill out his curve here. Yeah, until you find Reno Jackson, you definitely want to play it as safe as possible against the Dragon Warrior, because it is so aggressive. Uh, but he picks up the Emperor Tharason. That's actually pretty reasonable here. You get some really nice discounts. Yeah, Emperor is interesting. The problem is he's under a lot of pressure, and if his opponent just removes Emperor, say he has, well, the Slam Fire mm -hmm. Rex that Hot Mouth, in fact, <laughs> has in his hand, uh, you still take a lot of damage. And it will be a risk that Lead Paint does take, however. He's going to go ahead and uh, reduce this hand and getting to twisting Nether or Sawgoth the turn earlier can be a really big deal in protecting you. All right, Hot Meowth is going to go ahead and remove the Emperor. He does pick up the Blackwing Corruptor, but Ooh. just one mana short of being able to play that with the Slam. But the Alex Alexstrasza's Champion is a really big draw. This is putting Lead Paint on a two-turn clock. Champion comes down, he pushes for eight damage. Lead Paint is down to just seven. He really needs some help here. Oh, no. He, if he if he dark peddlers and finds uh, a power, power overwhelming. overwhelming, he can clear the board with shadow flame. But otherwise, he's in a really rough spot here. This Abusive sergeant would do it too. Yep. Abusive sergeant or power overwhelming or is there anything else? I, I don't think so. I think that's probably his only out. Find soul fire. Soul fire. That can let him kill the five four, which he might have to do. He actually, I, I believe he's has... still, if, if any if any minion stays on the board here, mm -hmm. though, there is War Axe plus Corruptor that yes. will end the game for Hot Meowth, and Lead Paint has no healing. Oh my goodness, and we were just saying, this is the reason you don't ban the Warrior, you bring the Reno Lock, you win this matchup, but the Dragon Warrior doing what it does best and just absolutely pressuring the heck out of Lead Paint. Yeah, the, the draw from uh, Hot Meowth with that, uh, Alex as a champion was a really big deal because it did set up this crucial increase to his clock. Uh, if he didn't have that down last turn, he would just not quite have enough damage to win this game. But as it stands, there is the lethal damage. Power of Blackrock will send this to one game to one. <laughs> wow, all right. Hot Meowth tying up this series very quickly. That was a fast game, too. I, that's what the, the Dragon Warrior wins against Reno Lock? They're pretty quick. Yeah, it absolutely has to be because, uh, unfortunately, no Reno Jackson there. But if you do get it, then it's it's very difficult for the Warrior to actually amount enough pressure. But in this case, Hot Meowth was able to take that game. And what do you think that says for Lead Paint? I mean, how does the Reno Warlock match up against the Enifin Paladin and then uh, Hot Meowth's Zoo deck? I think the Enifin Paladin is 
one of the reasons you want the, the the big end game burst is a deck like Reno Lock because uh, you have the tools to not just sort of force their hand in terms of having removal, but also keep them be unable to play cards like Jaraxxus, which is one of the most powerful cards in Reno mm -hmm. Lock in control matchups in general. When you're able to just leverage the the hero power value turn after turn, it's like, well, it's just not safe when there's the threat of anything can happen. Yeah, absolutely. The, man, the Reno Lock losing the matchup that it should have won and now might actually just suffer because of it. There is always the potential that you draw the removal that you need, you get the Reno, and then you can win against the Zoo. It's definitely possible um, with the early game minions like the Dark Peddler, the Imp Gang boss, Mortal Coil is really helpful as well. Well, it's, it's worth noting that the version that Lead Paint is playing uh, is not the sort of combo burst version that we've seen in previous seasons. Many of the, the versions that we saw a while ago were built to beat control more heavily, uh, included the faceless Leroy power overwhelming 20 burst damage combo, but we were able to replace cards like that with Cult Apothecary and other things. Mm -hmm. uh, the aggressive matchups do get a bit better, so uh, I don't think that, that the Zoo matchup is quite as bad as it used to be. But Lead Paint is going to choose to go with the Shaman. He's going to give the Warlock a bit of a break and uh, try to pick up another win here. And we are going to see Hot Mouth with his Paladin. He lost all three games with this earlier today. Let's see if he can pick up that win. He's got a very strong say, hand. He's going to pick up a win. This is a very good hand to do it. He has double Doomsayer in his opening hand, uh, which allows him to immediately answer Lead Paint's threats. Uh, and yeah, he's going to go ahead and coin one out right away. Exactly what Lead Paint does not the want to see. I mean, Lead Paint's hand is fantastic, too. If that Doomsayer hadn't have been there, it would have been Trog into Totem Golem into Totem Golem. Yeah. And you know his his hand is great against anything but the Doomsayer, but yeah. there's the Doomsayer. Oh, that's unfortunate for him, but he is going to have ways to rebuild. He can go ahead and uh, play the spirits on three, but the initiative does move oh, over to Hot Meowth. And Hot Meowth goes ahead, go ahead and plays a Blue Warrior to get some damage in here. Uh, there's some argument to just playing the second Doomsayer to ensure that you retain the tempo there, uh, forcing your opponent to take a blank turn three as well. Uh, but Hot Meowth does choose to hold on to it for another time. Yeah, maybe just thinking that he can uh, leverage a bit of a better Doomsayer at some point, but the, the Shaman is generally pretty good about dealing yeah, with I've threats. I'm a, little, I'm a little curious about that particular decision because the, the Doomsayer, as the game goes on, gets so much worse because as the, the Shaman gets more mana, things like Lava Burst or uh, Doom Hammer, Rock Biter, they all threaten to make the Doom uh, the Doomsayer somewhat irrelevant. Though there is the fact that you can use Doomsayer alongside a clear with, say, Pyromancer Quality player Doomsayer afterwards mm -hmm. to get a, a, a free turn at that point. Well, it did actually end up working out for Hot Meowth with that Murloc War Leader. He was able to trade into the Totem Golem, and we saw Lead Paint start to want to play the Feral Spirits last turn and then end up thinking about it for a second and went with the Tunnel Trog and the Totem Golem instead. And because of it, he's able to push for four damage this turn, but the Murloc representation is already really strong. Yeah, this game is going very much in Hot Meowth's favor so far. He has been able to contain most everything that Lead Paint has been able to do Looking to see if he has to get a uh, high result on that Peacekeeper. That's a big deal because yeah. it retains his entire board presence and allows him to actually push for more damage. Hot Meowth has the ability to clear the board, but it's going to hold on to it and I think set up that exact play we were talking about with the Pyro Quality plus Doomsayer to yes. get himself a free turn. And Lead Paint does have a lot of damage represented in hand. He's got that Doom Hammer, he's got the Rock Biter. He's overloaded this turn, so he's going to instead just try to push some minions out on board. But how is he going to be able to respond after this pyro equality? Yeah, he's, he's able to do a lot of damage right here. Uh, he can get Hot Meowth down to just 14 life, but he has not quite 14 in his hand. He has 10 mm -hmm. burst next turn. And if Hot Meowth plays the pyro equality plus Doomsayer, he sets up a turn where he just gets to cast Forbidden Healing for a huge amount next turn. So. Uh, may not quite be enough window for Lead Paint to uh, to get back here. Oh man, he's got 10 with the Rockbiter, Doomhammer, and one with the Squire. Unfortunately, still three damage off lethal, and Hot Meowth is going to be able to heal for 14 with that Forbidden Healing. Yeah, Meowth down to just four life, but Doomsayer will go off, actually three after the, uh, the attack from the Squire, but Forbidden Healing, it's a powerful card. Yeah, I've heard it's pretty good. I think it uh, made its way into a couple Paladin decks. 
And I think this is probably why. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Flame Wreath Faceless okay. is... That's a, that's a card that can do a little bit of work for Lead Paint here. Uh, he's already seen uh, several of the removal effects that can deal with it easily. Uh, Meowth does have a quality bluegill. They sort of poor yeah. man's board, uh, board clear if he really needs it next turn. Yeah, Lead Paint was definitely hoping for the Taunt Totem there. It would have stopped the bluegill. Oh, and there's another Second forbidden forbid healing. healing. And here we see the bluegill, the uh, lesser used enabler for equality. <laughs> and, and now Hot Meowth getting a little bit on the board with his uh, his soldier there. Feral Spirits gives Lead Paint the ability to you know, generate a little bit more. He's seen both equalities now, so he has more tools to actually stay on the board at this point. Uh, but Hot Mouth has that second Forbidden Healing, and he's going to have anything can happen afterwards, which will allow him to get, uh, I think it's two Blue Gills and a War, uh, yes. war Leader, mm -hmm. which can make some inroads uh, on Lead Paint's board. Lead Paint decides to trade into that 1-1 one, one Recruit instead of hitting face for two more damage. Hot Mouth picks up the, the fourth and final Murloc in his deck. Oh man, this he could go ahead and play that and then still heal for 12 health if he wants to. It costs him six healing to set up a much more powerful anything can happen. And yet, Hot Meowth is having to use all of his resources to stay afloat here. Flame Wreath Faceless. That's all actually right. an excellent That's, draw. Yeah, I mean, we will see the uh, the Feral Spirit protecting Lead Paint's minions. And he can get quite a bit of damage in here. There's no way for Hot Meowth to get a value trade with his uh, War Leader to make it die. So he'll only be able to get the uh, the two uh, charge minions along with the other War Leader mm -hmm. next turn. He can't get double value from this, from his anything, which you'd love to be able to do. Yeah, he's going to have two six damage blue gills, but one of them is going to have to go into the Feral Spirits token. Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. And he's actually, he can't. He can't spend any more mana if he plays anything next mm -hmm. turn. So he needs some help here. You know, this, this looked like it was going all his way, but suddenly... Lead Paint still needs a little bit more damage. If Hot Mouth clears off the two Feral Spirits tokens... Yeah, he can, he oh, can clear man. off the Feral Spirits, but he cannot deal with the Flame Reef Faceless. He can kill these and the Tuskar Totemic. Uh, that leaves eight damage on the board for Lead Paint, which means Lava Burst or Doom Hammer is a draw that wins the game. That's ni oh, neither of them. no. That's okay. He does he, still he have one totem. more draw in it's theory. It's a taunt totem. He can use... He could use his minions to clear off yeah, some of this me. board. He can clear the War Leader with the, uh, yeah, with the Searing Totem. And then he kills the other War Leader. I believe there's no immediate way for Hot Meowth to actually deal with the Flame Wreath Faceless. If he goes face, then Hot Meowth can actually trade into it. Mm -hmm. All right, he does go face. This does leave the many of the same outs, though Hot Meowth now has the ability to take the 7-7 off the board. Oh, Ragnaros Light Lord. Oh, that is a goodness. huge draw for Hot Meowth. That, I think. The board gets cleared up, and there Man. is 13 life for Hot Meowth and Lead Paint with no cards in hand. That is just the story of this game. Lead Paint has been so close twice now and just unable to close it out. The Horse Rider would have been... <laughs> would have been it? ...some damage that he really needed, but now what do you do? You can't kill the Light Lord. I actually would have been a little bit sure with that, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's still... He's just still uh, not quite able to assemble uh, assemble what he needs. Don't worry, Lux. The cavalry... He, he does attack into the Light Lord in hopes that mm -hmm. uh, the healing will not go to Hot Meowth's face. Oh man, he's still got Lava Bursts in deck. He has a oh, second God. Doom Hammer. More healing from the Ivory Knight. And he finds... Enter, Enter the, the Colosseum. Oh, he can take Holy Light, which will actually heal him for eight mm -hmm. total. And I think that what Hot Meowth cares the most about right now is just his life total. He can't play Enter the Colosseum this turn. Yeah, he does take Holy Light, so he's just trying to get himself out of range of any kind of burn, going up to 19. Interestingly, he actually could have healed, uh, could have healed Ragnaros and been insured an eight-point heal in his face if he's not if he's not taking a value trade with that Murloc. I think that actually would have just been uh, definitely the safer play this way. He has the potential to gain eight and six to his face, but. Uh, if he'd gone ahead and healed that Ragnaros, he would have ensured two it more health. It does get to the face, though. So 27 now for Hot Meowth here. <laughs> well, and this is this was a nail-biter for a while, but it is just out of reach for Lead Paint now.
We went from five health to even life totals and unable to get anything from that Tuskar Totemic and Hot Meowth is going to take a much needed win with his Murloc Paladin after being unable to get one earlier today against Roof Trellin. And the crazy thing is just how good Hot Meowth's early game there was. He had Doomsayer, he had Doomsayer, he had Pyro <laughs> Quality, and it was still so close. Lead Paint just was just so short and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Hot Meowth had that timely Ragnaros that really just sealed the deal. Well, Lead Paint's starting hand was also really, oh, yeah. really excellent. So I don't know if that would be you know, saying something about the overall quality of the Paladin deck or just that both these decks drew very, very well and, and you know, played as best as they could. And uh, it just ended up that the Paladin has so much healing in the list. It was unfortunately just out of reach for Lead Paint. And Hot Meowth is going to go up 2-1 in the series. Still has to get a win with his Zoo deck. We have seen Zoo flounder a little bit this week. It's a week. really good position, though, because Lead Paint still has his aggressive Warlock deck. Uh, rather, his aggressive Shaman deck. And mm -hmm. that's a matchup where the Warlock deck typically has a pretty big edge. Uh, but it, well, Lead Paint will go to his own Warlock deck, uh, which is the Reno Handlock. And let's see, uh, Doomsayer in his opening hand is an excellent start for Lead Paint. That's kind of a theme we've seen against the aggressive decks. Yeah. yeah, Lead Paint definitely wants to try and pick up this second win, tie himself up in the series, and then might have to get a really nice start as the Aggro Shaman against the Zoo deck. But this, this opening hand for Reno is okay. He has the Doomsayer, which is a great card, but he also has Draxes and Nazoth, yeah. which are cards he's looking to draw much later in the game. And Hot Meowth has a solid opening himself. He has the uh, powerful Flame Imp. That Infested Tauren actually could come in very handy in this matchup. It's going to mitigate quite a bit of damage um, and will most likely provide two trades for Lead Paint because the Zoo Minions usually have pretty low health. The Infested Tauren is a 2-3 and then Death Rattles into a 2-2 token as well. Yeah, Hot Meowth just going to go ahead and get his damage in with Flame Imp, send it to the face while he life taps. The end has come. That's a great card. Yeah, Shadow Bolt also an excellent draw for Lead Paint oh, here. He's really assembling a lot of uh, a lot of good tools for the matchup, as uh, life tap tends to do. Yeah, that Doomsayer was exactly what he needed to be able to get a turn to life tap to draw even further into his deck and find that removal that he really crucially needs in this game. If the Darkshire Councilman is just out of range of Shadow Bolt, Lead Paint does have the Twilight Drake, which looks to be uh, what he will likely play mm -hmm. this turn. It does induce a possible power overwhelming. He only has uh, the ability to make it a six health, or rather a seven health minion, which means that the Flame Imp plus Power Overwhelming can just take it off the board. He will just go with Infested Tauren here. Yeah, I really like this because if he played the Drake, the Flame Imp plus right. Power Overwhelming would just clear it off. But this way, he's really hoping that the Flame Imp goes into the Tauren and then the Darkshire Councilman clears off the token, which would allow him to Shadow Bolt the Councilman next turn. Uh, no such luck for Lead Paint, though. Uh, Hot Meowth, he's going face. And yeah, he's hoping, good reason. He's hoping to get double juggles there, but he'll uh, he'll take the protection on his councilman from any kind of removal, including this uh, this slime. And now Lead Paint in a really difficult spot. We see a shake of his head, has no good answer to Dark Show Councilman, which is really just threatening to get out of control. He can Shadow Bolt the Taunt, Power Overwhelming the yeah. token, and then run it into the councilman but then he, he provides the zoo with an entire next turn to reload onto the board and he has no removal we keep saying that this reno warlock deck has that card removal it has hellfire it has shadow flame it has twisting nether but it never seems to draw it in the early game when it really needs it and so now hot meowth as you mentioned a turn to reload gonna go ahead and life tap to start things off and eh, finds a dire wolf alpha so pushing a lot of damage this turn and lead paint Kind of lacking in his uh, his mass removal capacity, down to just ten life. Really needs Reno Jackson. Needs Hellfire something here. I think you have to tap for it. You're dead on board if you don't. Yeah, Lead Paint just not finding what he needs is this top card, an AOE effect. Man, Hellfire. It is not. Oh. It's Karen Blood Hoof and Hot Meowth has lethal. Fine. If Dark Peddler something. doesn't find something, nope. That's, that's that all over. Lead Paint, you see a shake of his head and a sigh. And Hot Meowth looking, uh, leaning into the camera with a smile. <laughs> Hot, 
<laughs> wave to the camera, oh, blows paint. a kiss. You gotta have a good attitude he knows about these it's things, all and over. he definitely does. Yeah, the Reno Lock is there not working is. out for him There's this the time. There's the concession. Hot Meowth will move on to the Summer Championship. Oh man, congratulations to Hot Meowth. He played two series today, went really, really great for him, was able to pick up a win with that Paladin this time, which is really, really what he needed. Yeah, it was that was an absolute nail biter too. It came down to just needing to have every mm -hmm. bit of resources that he was able to find, every bit of life really that he was able to uh, able to generate there and very well navigated. Uh, just lead paint just didn't go his way. Yeah, unfortunate for him, but Hot Meowth Definitely must be happy with that. And uh, it really remains to be seen, is the Reno Lock the better choice, or do you think the Zoo deck is the Warlock that you should be bringing to tournaments? I mean, what do you think? Uh, I would tend to lead toward Zoo these days. Uh, yes, there's a lot of Freeze Mages and a lot of decks that are kind of targeting Zoo, but you know, as we saw there, it, it's very powerful if, uh, if it's not really disrupted very effectively early on. And the Reno Lock deck has a lot of inconsistencies. It, it lost its theoretically good matchup against mm -hmm. Dragon Warrior and then fell to the Zoo deck as well. So it seems like it's, it's struggling quite a bit. Yeah, we have seen Zoo perform, you know, a little bit poorly uh, as well yesterday and, and earlier today. But the Reno Lock, unfortunately, not performing well for Lead Paint. It did win a game for Muzzy, but uh, did not work out this time. But Hot Meowth has booked his ticket to the America's Summer Championship. And we're going to throw it over to Saddle on the blackboard for an interview with him. Thank you, Cora. Yes, indeed, seven out of eight spots have been booked. Hot, Me Hot Meowth writes his name into the history of the America's Championship, and what a name it is as well. Hopefully, we have Hot Meowth standing by with us for an interview. Hot Meowth, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, so can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Awesome. So first things first, congratulations. Very well played. You must be over the moon, but I have to get the burning question out of the way first. Uh, what yeah. is the deal with the name? Uh, it's pretty and not properly if you want to say. It's obviously a Pokemon reference. Mm -hmm. And like Bottom Leopard even like made a prediction like talking about my name. But um, Hot Mouth, like someone, like people mispronounce as Hot Mouth, so it's kind of like an improper name, like M-I-L-F, so. Okay. <laughs> Just don't mention it again. But yeah, I it's been a like, really stressful day. Like a lot of people on Twitch are like mad at me or something because I've been memeing a lot. Like I guess like facial expression is kind of right. bad manners, but I didn't email or anything, so I, I don't know what's up. But and then like the Reddit think like the DC thing, like it wasn't intentional. Like maybe I'll address that issue later. But yeah, it was like uh, I don't know. Uh, first thing first, like. Blizzard, um, please, please nerf Yogg. I every time if I was like Rufalin or like um Lead Paint play it, I just had a heart attack. Actually, it's not. I'm not even role playing. Like it's just like it's such a strong card, and like it, it like messed me up like two games. And then like the last game, like after the DC, I just kind of tilted like the against Rufalin, like um my Paladin Mirror. Yeah, it's, it, it's a long day. I didn't expect to. I was, I was thinking like, I got this in the bag against Rufalin, but like, he's a pretty good player too. He like, bought some really wacky decks that's built to Temple Mage. He's famous for like his wacky Temple Mage face. But yeah, I'm, I'm just glad that um, I made it food because like I didn't even make, I didn't like me more like make any facial expression this game obviously because like I just want to focus on the game and I'm pretty tired and just grind it out and I, I'm, I'm happy I, I, I got in here. Awesome. This this is the easiest interview I've ever done in my life. I just haven't had to say anything. This is this yeah. is perfect. It's just all right. Very very yeah, quickly. I actually have some more to say. Like I need to shout out to my perfect. Yeah, do that to my crew. Like um, I have a Skype group. It's like a joke team, like a meme team. It's called um Team KYS. Um, kind young savages. But um, I really want to thank um Demigod. Without Demigod, I wouldn't be here. Like Demigod, he's a really good um Agrochamp killer and. He uh, played in yes, um, ESL tournaments before, and he helped me build my Agro Shaman deck and helped me get to rank one legend and helped me um, prepare for this tournament. And also, the Merald Paladin deck, it's um, it's his work from Vista Syndicate, so we really um, thank him. And also the Vista Syndicate Data Repair team. And also, I want to thank um, Gallon to one free. Um, I was so scared that I would be like in, in his foot, like because like Gallon to one free got um. To the spring prelim, like top 16, I lost two games. So I was so scared I would be like him. And then, special thanks to Query, too. Like, 
Curly 97. Those two guys uh, really help out to pr um, practice and scrim with me. And also, like, I scrim like, a lot with a lot of people, like, before then, too. Like, every one of my friends is, is like, thank you very much. And, like, uh, as, like, and they all wish me good luck. So I, I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to cut you off there, dude. We, we've got a show to run. That was, yeah. an, that was an awesome interview. I'm glad that you're, you're happy to talk to us, but I'm going to let you go, and uh, congratulations. We'll see you very soon. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, you can spell um, mouth without EMO. All right, th that's it. Perfect. What a way to end. Congratulations to Hot Me Out. Uh, great character. I'm sure you do have supporters in Twitch chat out there, so don't worry about it too much, but thank you. We'll let you go. Congratulations, and we'll see right, you thanks. soon.